Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, 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 welcome, welcome back, back to, back to Clean, Clean Cut, Cut, where we can, we talk, can talk about, about the, the truth, truth about, about just about, about anything, anything. As, long as, as long as we use logic, logic and common, common sense. sense. This season, I thought it would be a good idea to get into the question of the teachings of Catholicism specifically, the rules that one is expected to follow as a Catholic in addition to the Ten Commandments. Each of these rules is related to our relationship with the Church. There are five of them. First, we have to attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, and on those days remain free of work and activity that might harm or inhibit our sanctification. Second, we have to confess our sins at least once a year. Third, we must receive the Eucharist at least once during the Easter season. Fourth, we need to participate in the fasting and abstinence days that the Church has established. Finally, we need to help provide for the Church's needs. Some of these are simple, going to Mass, receiving the Eucharist, and going to confession we've discussed elsewhere, but what about fasting and providing for the needs of the Church? Well, to start with, you're not obligated to give money every time the Church asks you to. If they plan to pass your money along to some group or organization that doesn't deserve it, you should use good judgment and make your decision responsibly. However, if the church is in need and your local parish priest can't pay his electric bill, and if he appeals to the parishioners for help, they should be willing to help him. Now, I have heard of some circumstances in which higher-ups within the church have tried to turn this into a moral gray area by taking money directly from parishes for their support of various causes unrelated to the well-being of the church. This is despicable. But the important point is that the sinful action is committed not by the faithful, who still don't want to support those pet causes, but by the person responsible for the decision to take the money in the first place. They would be the ones deciding to damage the church in order to accomplish some other goal, and they would be the ones sinning. So, even if some member of the clergy harms your local parish in this way, or sells it to pay for some non-church-related objective, you are not required to compensate for their evil. As for fasting, well, I'll see you next time. Next time, what's the difference between fasting and abstinence? That's, That's all for, all for now, now, so, so keep, keep asking, asking questions, questions, and thanks, thanks for watching. For watching.